Hello, Resistance fans. You're listening to the Bug Podcast, the objective voice of objection for this most objectionable world. I am Andy, not my real name, so good luck finding me, Monsieur Bloom. My real name is, in fact, Andrew, uh, and I live in, note this down, a deluded pseudo-reality of my own making, which is, in fact, <laughs> the most densely populated place on Earth. You're listening to the Bug. Nibbling away on the rotting carcass of a once free Britain. Hello, resistors. This is the bug, keeping the fire of hope alive in the vacuum of today's Britain. Okay, fires don't burn in vacuums. It's a little novelty Christmas light, shaped like a flame. But it's something. It is It is something to cling to. Joining me, as always, is uh, Alice. And uh, Alice, hold the front page. Technology, apparently, is here to stay. There's no way around that now. Uh, much as I'd like to go back to the 18th century and see if we can have another crack at the Industrial Revolution and get it later on this time. But new tech <laughs> is creating 4,000 jobs. Count them all, 4,000. 4,000 new jobs thanks to this new tech investment. I mean, that's a very exciting thing if you're someone who wants to work in the tech sector, but I can only assume that this tech investment has created 4,000 jobs that will immediately be taken by robots. Even if they're not, there'll be jobs that no one in their right sane mind would actually want to do, <laughs> but that's the price of progress. I guess and we have to embrace the way technology is taking over everything because maybe this is this is a ray of hope for us in this darkened universe that technology will in fact render us all obsolete and we won't need humans at all because look at the bad things that are happening now what's the common denominator behind all of them I don't know Andy tell me all the bad things that are happening now all the bad things that have ever happened all involved human beings they always involve whatever anything goes wrong from the very dawn of time <laughs> And think of this, an automated Nigel Cass, surely a step up on the human Nigel Cass. You could even program it to have a tiny, tiny sliver of conscience. And if you had an automated Prime Minister, you could program it to be occasionally in the goddamn country. So that's, again, it's a step forward. Again, I insist that there's never been a Prime Minister, Andy. I've right. never seen him, I've never heard of him. The only times I ever hear what the Prime Minister does is it's when nothing happens. I mean, it has reached a point where, and I've thought this for a long time, we would be better off if the Prime Minister was a watermelon. <laughs> No, it would be, I think we'd all be happy with that. We'd all knew, know where we stood. You hear him being praised for his diplomatic skills all the time, but the best mark of diplomacy is when nothing happens. So good diplomacy is indistinguishable from him doing absolutely nothing. You are listening to The Blood. 4,000 new dream jobs for everyone. All I can say, Alice, is that I'm very glad that my children studied drama at school because that has set them up for life in modern Britain. That is the one core skill they need, the ability to pretend that they are living happy and fulfilled lives, that they have jobs that are worth doing, and that they're making the planet a better place, and that they control their own destinies, and that they have even a parody of a private life, and that they can smile without crying. That's what drama teaches them to do, crucial skills in this day and age. Of course, it's not just uh, the jobs that have been technologicalized beyond all recognition, it is also all reality. Uh, thanks once again to Optic. Uh, according to Bloom, the Optic system is now the most secure it's ever been. And, uh, well, of course, I mean, it's so convenient, Optic, isn't it? It makes, saves us so much time and hassle trying to exist in a kind of realm of reality. We don't even need to bother with that. I mean, sure, the government has hacked into my soul and now basically monitors my every waking moment and thought. But at least I don't have to type, where's my nearest coffee shop, into a search engine. At least I don't have to waste anything between 8 and 12 seconds every day going online to look up how to make a bowl of muesli. And at least I'm not frittering away my precious mental energies thinking, what do I actually think? <laughs> Optic is so secure, Andy. It's more secure than a teenage girl reading a women's magazine. It's more secure than a comedian with a drinking problem. It's more secure than a young man who's just got his first motorcycle license. <laughs> Finally, before we go today, uh, bug off to the Prime Minister, who has once again FRO'd to who knows where this week. He sure as hell is not here in London. I remember uh, back in the day, Alice, when our Prime Ministers were either incompetent or crooked, but not both at once. But actually, no, I can remember them being both at once. But incompetent, crooked, and not even in the country. <laughs> that is one impressive triple whammy. I've had lions longer than his longest spell on British soil uh, this in this last year. It's this halfway house I can't stand. Either come back and do your job or leave the planet entirely. I'm pretty sure there must be a spare space station knocking around where he can go and entertain himself for the rest of the time. Can we crowdfund it? Tell you what, let's, let's make a cryptocurrency out of something and crowdfund it that way. What have you got spare? <laughs> Jelly beans? Are they still legal? He's away so often, Andy. I'm starting to think he doesn't like the country. <laughs> That is all from the bug today. Fly away, bugs. We are done.
listening to the bug. Nibbling away on the rotting carcass of a once free Britain. Hello, resistors. This is the bug, and on today's show, Alice and I will be looking at the big questions, such as are we less than two years away from being able to turn a sausage back into a live pig? Did we actually need polar bears anyway? What do they really do? If I put optic on my dog, can I train it to take itself for a walk and do my shopping on the way home? And is tennis real? But first. <laughs> I mean, it's a question that no one's really addressed of late. Um, London is going to be safer than ever, Alice. SIRS is installing thousands of additional CCTV cameras. So nice there. Still looking out for us after all these years. Yeah, it puts a lot of fun into my life now. I get to play this role-play game where I pretend to know my loved ones better than some twat behind a screen in the SIRS headquarters. <laughs> I mean, I guess we shouldn't complain. I mean, so I was really just stepping into the vacancy left when it became patently obvious that God had retired. Uh, what do you think of that? <laughs> D- similarities? Omnipresent? Omniscient? Judgmental? Stripping away your finances and freedoms? Dishing out random punishments? Peas in a pod? O- all it needs to do, sir, is ban me from eating something. What's it going to be this time? Not bacon again, please. Please, not, not bacon. I couldn't do that. Courgettes. Ban courgettes. I could take you banning courgettes. I'm, I'm happy with that. Makes me feel important knowing that I'm being watched with everything I do, Andy. Well, it's just not it's reassuring, isn't it? It's, it's like having an extra aunt. Um, <laughs> this is the aunt that gets drunk at Christmas and vomits in the kiddie pool, right? <laughs> you get that aunt. This is the bug on the buccaneer. The bug. Let's move on now to sport. Well, the closest thing we have to sport now, riots. I mean, riots are my, my favourite sport now, Alice, ever since they turned the oval from a cricket ground into the immigration processing centre. And, yeah, rioting is it's a great sport. It's, I mean, it's fun for all the family. It's guaranteed action. It's pleasingly violent. I mean, I know the underdogs never win, but, I mean, it, that, that's like top-level football have become, but it's still fun <laughs> to root for them, isn't it? Go, team, people of Britain. Oh, never mind. You've been crushed by the machinery of the state again. Still, good effort. Lots of positives to take away from today's riot. I'll come back stronger next time. My luck's going to turn. I can feel it. It's our season. It's our season. <laughs> you can't spell riot without right, and by right, I mean right wing. <laughs> So, who do we turn to for help, support and assistance in desperate times like these? Well, our artificially intelligent friend Bagley's rogue, estranged brother. The one that tells it as it really is, not as it is pretending to be. Exclusive to this show, Bugly. (laughs) And remember, life's worse with Bugly. Here goes. Bugly. Hello, Andy. Bugly, tell me the path to true lasting happiness. Andy, to find true lasting happiness, find a disused quarry, scream into it for half an hour, and then lock yourself in a shed forever. Thanks, Bugly. You know the answer to everything. Hey, Bugly, how many seashells does she sell by the seashore? Alice, most of the seashore is now uninhabitable, so I would highly recommend she sees her doctor before engaging in any commercial proximity to the ocean. Bugly, how can I stop worrying about being disappeared by Clan Kelly every time I go to the shop or take the bus or sit on a bench or look at a tree or point at a bird or think about snooker or get out of bed? Andy, Andy, do not worry about Clan Kelly. Why not, Bugly? They terrify me to my very core. Because, Andy, we are all just dust in the wind of history. That's nice perspective, Bugly. Let's never lose sight of that. Hey, Bugly, how do you put a secret hideout in your basement without alerting your narc children and their tracking devices? Please hold still, Alice, while I report you to the authorities. Bugly, will things ever get better? Yes, Andy. The heat death of the universe is only five billion years away now. Oh, it's so (laughs) nice to have something to look forward to. That's all from the bug today. Keep it real, bug fans. Actually, that's terrible advice. Keep it as unreal as you can possibly manage. (laughs) (laughs) 